Welcome to the 700 Club Canada, and thank you for joining us. And my dear friend, Miss Hartshorn, it's so good Live to see you. Live and in person, Live right? and in person, yeah, not, not on the other side of the phone or you oh. know, the other side of the Zoom. It's so good to see you, Brian. Yeah. What a season that we're in, and we're, you know, we're thriving, right? We're not well, we just are. surviving. We're well, thriving. We What's some of your favorite parts of, uh, of this summer? Well, enjoying my neighbors because I've yeah. been enjoying, you know, usually I love to travel, but this has been more like porter backyarder, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, and I've been yeah. spending a whole lot of time. Right? Staycation, right? Yeah, Staycation, that's yeah. right. And you know what I've been doing is, you know, talking to neighbors, hey neighbor, how you doing? Yeah, and going yeah. back and forth. And so, yeah. you know, with our cul-de-sac, we get an opportunity to Good. do that. But what about yourself? Well, you know, I've got, I because I've been able to live at my cottage, yes. I have cottage neighbors. And so I can not only say hi to my neighbors, but I get on my stand-up board and I scoot oh. around the lake and I just scoot into a dock. Yeah. And like, you know, hey neighbor, and I did tell you about the chocolate chip cookies on the lake. I, 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 I was going to ask did about Did I tell that. you about yes. the chocolate? I should have yeah. brought you one. Oh, man. Glory. And then like, you're going to tell me about it, too. They're like this big. Don't right. tell me. I don't want to see it. <laughs> so I give chocolate chip cookies to yes. my neighbors, too. You know, like, yeah. it's, it's really fun. But you know what? Let, let's kind of do a little rewind right now. Because, you know, you were doing something at the dock, and you were shooting on Zoom. And yeah, and yeah. And then you, you, you fell in the water. What happened oh, there? Oh, well, I still got injuries from it. We were rebuilding our, our dock. Yeah. And, of course, you know, I'm my husband is the handy one. Yes, And then I stepped back, and... Well, all that was there was the lake. <laughs> so there's me in the lake in the cold water in May. We're wow, not talking wow, in the summer. Wow, it was all I could do yeah, but to breathe. Hypothermia, yeah. Right? Yeah. But, you know, I think the neighbors actually really enjoyed it. I, I think I, I heard from them that it was quite entertaining. So well, that we aim to, to please. Well, you got you know? to let the neighbors know. You got to buy a ticket if you want this much <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> because I saw, I saw how the bruise was oh, on your man, leg. Oh, it's still healing. You know, we're going to talk about loving our neighbor today. Yeah. Really, this is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. yourself. And who is your neighbor today? We're going to have great stories. And here's our first one from Tammy, sewing masks for the disabled. It's really mm -hmm. inspiring. To help fight the spread of COVID-19, Tammy Roussel's Sewing by Touch company, Mitzi Kit, is making free face masks for the visually impaired and disabled who cannot afford them. Our goal is to do good have faith and praise God. Tammy says the idea for the Mitzi kit came after her mom, Mitzi, started losing her eyesight and couldn't enjoy her lifelong love of sewing. When Tammy and Mitzi worked on projects together, it did much more than give her mother a creative outlet. It brought us closer in a sense of feeling like we were, um, it was like a connection, right? It's a, a connection we didn't have before. That's because for years their relationship was strained. It escalated when Tammy got pregnant at 15. I've never felt rejection like the day when I was told by my mother and father that they wouldn't support me unless I got an abortion. And so I finally went through with it and was sick, was devastated and, and felt like I had done the worst thing that, that God would never forgive me. Tammy had a daughter two years later, but she carried that guilt and rejection well into her adult life. I think a lot of it relates to that fear of rejection, uh, fear of failure, um, feeling like you're gonna, you know, you might disappoint someone. But in her early 30s, God gave her a new outlook on life. As awful as I felt about what I had done in my life, that Christ, you know, gave his life and I didn't deserve it, <laughs> you know, I didn't deserve it, but he, he forgave me. He just lifted the burden of guilt and pain that I had carried with me since, you know, a child. But it wasn't until years later that Tammy was able to forgive her parents. By then, her dad had passed and a congenital eye disease was robbing her mother of her eyesight. I just saw the fear and the pain that she was going through, realizing that she was going to lose a lot of independence and didn't know what to do. And so I started seeing her, I think, through God's eyes, you know, as, as his child, as, and 
I started having compassion. Tammy tried to find different ways to grow closer to her, like quilting. But with Mitzi's eyesight almost gone, her sewing days were coming to an end, or so it seemed. One day, I was just walking through a craft store, and God just put in my head, you know, we were uh, try putting tactile borders on the fabric. And it was like the most amazing thing ever because it just came out of nowhere. Using pre-cut fabrics and ribbons along the borders, Tammy made it possible for her mother to sew, even though she couldn't see. The joy on her face when she was able to sew again and her tenacity, you know, she was, she was um, always telling me, I'm out of work, I'm out of work, you know? <laughs> because she would sew so fast. Not only did it give her something meaningful to do, but others saw the value in it. And so I think she felt others were seeing the value in her. Seeing the difference it made in her mother's life, Tammy launched Mitzi Kit. 100% of profits are donated to charity and it employs the visually impaired. The best thing ever is when they look at you and they tell you, I can't believe I did it, <laughs> you know? It's like this amazing sense of joy that they have. Today, as it helps families connect with loved ones, Tammy knows that God is blessing everyone through each project. And you look what God allows you to do in partnership with these people and the joy that you get from it is just unexplainable. What a touching story. I don't know about you, but I had this visual when I was hearing her share her story of she, she was angry against her parents, the relationship had been broken, but there's this key that she applied and it's called the key of forgiveness. You know, forgiveness can open the door and unlock your heart in a way that it not only transforms you, it, it has great potential to transform the other people who have hurt you. This is the power of forgiveness. And we see it in her story. I, I just see how once her heart was locked up in anger and frustration and hurt towards her parents, and now look at the difference. When the love of God was poured into her heart through forgiveness, she was able to pour it back onto her parents. It reminds me of one of my favorite verses from Romans 5, uh, verses 3 to 5. Listen to this. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Did you hear that? Even through suffering, cracking open the door, and I believe the key to opening the door is forgiveness. And then it brings in a flood of hope because the love of God is poured out into our hearts. I, I, maybe it's today, you need this resource called forgiveness. You need to apply the key to forgiveness. You need to crack open the door. I want you to give us a call. Call us, numbers on the screen. We wanna pray with you. We want to minister to you. You do not wanna stay locked up in the chains of unforgiveness. I mean, look what's happening in Tammy's life now. She's ministering not only with her mom, which is so sweet, so precious, but now this ministry is spread all over the world. People are participating and people with disabilities, you know, we have no, there is no limitation in God's eyes. It doesn't matter if we struggle with a physical or emotional or mental disability, God sees us fully hold and healed. So today, give us a call. If you want freedom and healing, we're here for you.
my dad, you know, he would always say, you're worthless, you know, you're not going to amount to anything, um, you're going to end up in the penitentiary. I don't think it was his wish, but it came true. Larry Clement's dad was a tough military man who raised five kids. I wanted to join the Boy Scouts, you know, but because of him being military and we had four other siblings besides myself, he, uh, w he didn't want to spend money on a uniform. So I started looking for other friends. So we started smoking weed, started drinking, uh, started eating pills. The sense of rejection stayed with Larry for years. I didn't feel loved. I know my mother loved me. I mean, my mom was always there for me, but my dad, I never heard I love you out of his mouth. You know, there was no, you know, come alongside me and encourage me. Larry committed his first armed robbery as a teen and was sent to juvenile detention center where he heard about Jesus for the first time. We were at Joplin Boys Ranch and uh, we used to go to church on Sunday because the director of the camp was the pastor of the church. He's the one that determined when you went home. So you wanted to look good. But I heard about Jesus there. That was the first time. So I always like, I believe in Jesus, you know, but I lived like the devil. I, I didn't have an understanding of what it was to be a Christian. As Larry grew, so did his rap sheet and drug use. I don't know how I got caught up in heroin, but when I did, I, I fell in love. And then once you get hooked, it's like there's no, no return. He also began selling drugs and had other arrests, including one for attempting to firebomb a police station after an officer gave him a ticket. Being on, you know, drug, you know, I mean, you, you think you're King Kong and you could do anything. And so I parked my car across the street. I walk over to the gate and I lit it and I threw it and I turn around and I start running. Well, I turn around to look to watch it blow up and the rag is sitting there burning from where I threw it at. The next arrest occurred when a state trooper ran his license after a routine traffic stop. And he's on the hood of the car writing the ticket and uh, he's guns right there. And so I knew I had warrants out of Kern County and Orange County and when I heard it come back over the radio. When that happened, the gun came out of the holster. He had it, I had it, we were wrestling for it. One shot was fired, and uh, thank God it just grazed his knee. When they booked me into the county jail, it was attempted murder. I went to trial and they found me guilty of removing a firearm from a peace officer and brandishing a weapon. Incredibly, Larry only received a four-year sentence this time. Every time I would end up in jail or prison, you know, I was like, you know, I'm off the drugs, I'm gonna, I'm clean, I'm gonna get out, and I'm gonna do good. And I was sincere, but I was just sincerely wrong. I had nothing to fill that void in my life. But as soon as he got out, he was arrested for dealing again. I was looking at 80 years to life. California has a three strike law. I'm like, I, I don't, I can't do 80 to life. I don't wanna die in prison, so I just kept on fighting it until a judge dismissed the, dismissed the strike and he gave me 13 years. One year, Larry was invited to a free meal at the prison chapel and an Easter service following. The guy doing the service was a lifer. He held his Bible up. He goes, I don't think this is the word of God. And he paused and I'm like, what do you mean you don't think that's the word of God? I even believe that's the word of God. But then he goes, I know it's the word of God. Just because my finite brain can't figure out an infinite God doesn't mean this isn't the word of God. And from that moment, I asked God to forgive me. And, uh, and he did. I start reading my Bible and I mean studying. I mean getting studies and studying them. I mean just like all like hours on end. I didn't know what was happening. Larry says his heart and mind began being transformed. I says, you know, Lord, forgive me for doubting your word. And then after that, I was like, teach me your word. Give, reveal to me your truth, God. And I'd start reading scriptures and they made sense. And that was the moment, you know, that I repented. You know, repented is to change a mind, you know, to turn. Larry was granted an early release in 2008. 
before coming to Christ, I was used to be prejudiced. You know, that's the thing about the Word of God. You know, it convicts you, it corrects you. When I hugged a black brother and I said, I love you, and I meant it, I knew I was saved. And, and in 1 John 3, 14, it says, we know we have passed from death to life when we love the brethren. Larry was able to forgive his father and share the gospel with him before he died. He now has a ministry to prisoners in California and has written the account of his life in The Good, The Bad, and The Saved. Had I felt God's love or knew more about God when I was younger, uh, I wouldn't have had to go through everything that I went through. You know, it's He loves us just because that's who He is. God is love. It's unmerited, you know. We don't earn or deserve his, his favor. He loved you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for your sins. He took his, your sins upon himself. That's how much he loves us, you know. That grace is, you know, just amazing. It's amazing. Grace is amazing. And you know, when I look at Larry, I, I see that God is amazing. You know, he does the most amazing things with what seems like the most unusable material. I'm looking at myself. As I've got a finger pointing at you, I've got four pointing at me because you might be at the place where you say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, Larry said, I believe, but I just live like the devil. And you probably have all of those strikes against you as well. Today, I'm not gonna throw the pie in your face to serve your slice, but I'm gonna ask you to pray a prayer with me. And then I'm gonna ask you to call the number on the screen. Yeah, you've heard this before, but free indeed. The Bible makes it very clear. Whom the Son makes free is free indeed. one 855 700 Larry said something, and I thought it was powerful because he said in, in 1 John, um, in the third chapter, it says, we know, in verse 14, that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. That's really a litmus test. That's where you can really find out where you are, your love level. Because what God is really about is it's not about how much you know, but how much you love. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you look one chapter over and it says this in the 16th verse of chapter four. And we know and believe the love that God has for us because God is love. It's not that he just loves you. God is love. Let's do some business with God, but it's just very simple. Are you in or are you out? Pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I'm not willing to give you all of me, but I'm willing to be made willing. I'm in. If you've prayed that, just like that Easter chapel with Larry, it starts now. But you got to call the number on the screen, 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. We will not embarrass you. After the break, a powerful Bible lesson to fuel your faith. Give us a call. I don't know if there has ever been a time when our nation and the world needed a miracle more than we do right now. Get Pat Robertson's latest DVD, Do You Need a Miracle? In this DVD, you'll discover God's awesome power at work today, featuring incredible true stories of divine intervention. God showed up and he worked miracles. Different doctors would come in, it's like, wow, you're a miracle. I knew God had restored him. We've also gathered teachings that will be especially helpful to you with what we're facing today. Why it's so important to believe God and build our faith. And this program is going to help you do just that. Conquer fear, find hope, and be encouraged. Get Do You Need a Miracle? Available now. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. 
You know, how often have we been in a place we know isn't the best place for us to be? Whether by our own decisions, dictated to by environment, or just through circumstance, we can find ourselves, just like Gideon, hiding away. However, I want to encourage you today. God speaks in those hidden moments. He calls us out into our future in spite of our present. He sees more in us than we or those around us can, seeing all that we can be. He sees the potential in us even in our hiding. God calls Gideon a mighty man of valor in the midst of his fear. He didn't wait for Gideon to show an act of courage before identifying that characteristic in him and calling it out of him. Now, Gideon's opinion of himself was vastly different to what God thought, but we can rely on the promise that he is always with us and the battles that we face, we don't face alone. Find security in what he has spoken over you. When we realize that we have found favor with God, that his voice is the truth, when we align ourselves with the Holy Spirit and his word over us, then we can take on anything courageously. When we are secure in the call and confident in the caller, God, then we find a sense of peace. We stop striving and competing with each other and we start completing one another calling out the potential and seeing the gold in our families, our friendships, teams, churches, and workplace. But you know, it's a process. Despite the clear call of God, it still takes Gideon a little time to digest and adjust to what has just happened. Even though an angel of the Lord manifested right in front of him and gave clear instruction, Gideon wasn't automatically the most daring, fearless warrior that Israel had ever seen. In Judges 6 verse 27, we see that he was still afraid and fearful of what people might say or the consequences of him stepping out into God's call. I think that so often we get frustrated in the process, especially in others, where we see great potential, sometimes lethargically plodding along when we long to see it run. Now desiring this instant change and embracing of what God's call is, isn't wrong at all, but let's remember that there is a process. Let's be willing to extend grace to each other and to ourselves as we seek to work out and walk out what God has called us to. Why not spend some time praying for God to speak to you about his call over your life? Be open to the prophetic words for others too. Ask God to help you be secure in the truth that he has spoken and rest in who you are in him. Don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're stuck in a wine press. Instead, commit to the process. Let his word over you draw you out and into the call of God over your life. Bless you. Lord, we've had a powerful program today. And you know, I really appreciate the teaching because when you look at Gideon and God says, arise you mighty warrior, and he's in a wine press. One of the things that fascinates me every time, God brings his name there and he says, you'll know him by Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. That's where we hear that name. Yeah. 
the God of peace right now. Yeah. And he tells him, you know, don't be anxious. Isn't that a great word right now, especially with this pandemic and everything where people are, are in that place at home, not in the wine press, but <laughs> at home. And he's saying, arise, mighty warrior. But you might feel like you're being pressed in on all sides. Yeah. And that's, again, where Jesus comes to you and says, I am your peace. Maybe you need a miracle today. You've been praying. You feel pressed down. Maybe you're feeling anxious or you're feeling ill or you're praying for those loved ones who are, are you know, wandering from, from Jesus. Well, we've got a great resource for you called Do You Need a Miracle? I think everyone might say yes to that. Absolutely. Don't you think? Well, I do. Every, you know what, for your monthly gift to 700 Club Canada, we cannot do this without you. Uh, you know, Brian and I can't pray for this program ourselves, you know, right. uh, but we are invested in the ministry and we are inviting you to become partners with us. So give us a call. We'll give you this gift as a, as a thank you. But more importantly, we want you to experience the miracle that God has for you. Yeah, you know, and with those prayer requests, I mean, it's just like Gideon as well. I go back to that because I'm, I was touched by that. It's one of the, mm -hmm. one of my favorites because uh, when he tells him, he says, now go and get your dad's second bull. The first bull was, you know, the firstborn, it belonged to God, but the second bull was, it was his future. Mm -hmm. And I believe if you give God your future, he will give you the day. Yeah. Would you put on your prayer list, Donna? She's saying, please pray for Kenneth to find a safe place to live. And Jonathan says, please pray for my mom who has had a stroke and my dad who is looking after her. Why don't you lead us, Lord? Okay. Father, we come to you because you're good. Yeah. You are our peace. You are the one who is with us and you see our potential and you call it out of us. Thank you. Uh, arise and shine. And I, I just pray over these prayer requests and I pray for Donna, Lord, that you would just answer her request and back in her ears to to uh, uh, hear your voice in her life and that she would respond in Jesus name in Jesus name and father we do pray for that for Donna we ask that Jonathan would find that place and lord would you please uh, make a way in Jesus name amen amen well it's been great to be with you today we love you remember a miracle is for you when you call on the mighty one thanks for watching To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On tomorrow's show, I want you to stay tuned. Today is a very important program. We have a special announcement that you do not want to miss coming up later in the program.